we caught on this pin peak. The clothing is in progress now. We're good to go, Joe Medellin. How are you, mm -hmm. my dear friend, Joma? How are you today? Ah, it, it seems like it was just yesterday when we had our event, and here we are. It's been a month. It, it, time sure feels moving faster than I want it. Um, <clears throat> we're already half of the year, and um, yeah, it, it just amazing how time flies, and, and I look forward to another episode of our conversation. And I, I do believe that you have a, a good friend of yours who will be our guest. And I look forward in uh, getting to know him and, and uh, learning from him, from his wisdom and his life experience as a football coach and other things that uh, he does. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited uh, in what we're in our episode today. Thank you for joining me, Joma. Yes, it's... Um... <clears throat> Our live workshop today, my dear friend, Joma De Leon. This interactive learning forum for young adults. Me and Joma De Leon as entrepreneurs, thought leaders, and the fitness coach and the life coach are always doing live workshops to help our younger generation be the entrepreneurs and the thought leaders of the 21st century. If we can share our knowledge and our wisdom with them to help them to be amazing people in society, which we know they are, so be it. That's why we're here. So we have a great audience who always comes and follows us and watches us. Thank you for you being here. Ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate you. And like always, me and Joe and Leon, we'd like to thank all these people who are working behind the scenes to make this workshop happen. Like Anshu Tiwari, the lovely um, Lisa Marie, you know, and Jay Jim Pintiani. There's a lot of amazing ladies and amazing guys who make this happen for us behind the scenes. And really, we really appreciate what it is that you actually do for us. And just to say your thank you for, for making this happen, this workshop, and to um, thank you for everything that you do. It's so much appreciated. And we know your hard work always pays off for us. And we're always trying to work hard, aren't we, behind the scenes to really help each other grow to develop, to make these workshops um, applicable for everybody so they can share value and knowledge and information from us so these workshops are very friendly they're very um, interactive we'd love you to interact with us with comments and feedbacks we always look forward to your comments and feedbacks on what you have to input and what you've got to offer or what your feedback is and what you feel is important about these meetings and if it's really helping you so we're going to be joined later on by my dear friend of mine called James Gregory, who's a football coach. So he's going to join us later. And then uh, we're going to be asking some amazing questions. And it's going to be a great workshop. We can feed off questions and answer. You're going to be answering some amazing questions. And you're going to hear more about my dear friend James Gregory as a football coach. And we're going to interact with us, what we do as a coach, and why coaches are really important for our youth and our younger generation and why we feel that everybody needs a coach in their lives. Just to ask for help is really important, isn't it? And we know what men are like. We don't like asking for help. <laughs> so the more we ask for help and the more we can help ourselves, the more, probably more experienced people can help us as well grow and develop. Because there's always somebody who's got a little bit more experience than what we have. You can share their knowledge with us so they can help us grow and develop. And that's the way the world works, isn't it? So I really hope you enjoy this workshop and hope you get as much as you can out of it. So Joma, what are you what is, what's going on for you in your life at this moment? What's what's happening for you, my good friend? Oh man, I have so many moving parts right now in my life that um, sometimes a little bit overwhelming. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of the things that I want to do later later today is to find a good, probably a good two hours of quality time where I could I can just sit down and grab, grab my pen and paper and, and just think through um, what are really the things that are important that I need to focus my time and energy every single day <clears throat> so that... Uh, I know that I'm moving to the right direction. 
I'm not, I don't know about you, but I have a tendency sometimes to try to do things more than I need to do. And um, at the end, at the end of the day, I feel like, oh, I did so many things, but it didn't feel like I accomplished great things. So what I want to do is just choose probably the top three key movers that I, I that I need to really focus on and discipline myself to invest my quality and energy on those three things every single day so that at the end of the day, I know that uh, I accomplished what I need to accomplish that, that are key movers uh, in my life. Um, I'm about to go back to school. Semester is about to start again in about in about a month from now. So I want to start reading ahead of time for for that for those classes that, that I need to take. Uh, I need obviously I need to focus on developing my career and my business as a coach and as a life coach and a fitness coach. And the third thing is make sure that I spend good quality. Uh, quality time with my family that, that's another key thing that I, 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 need, I need to guard in my life because it's so easy to so busy with other stuff um, that the quality time with my family can easily be neglected and that's something that I, I, I want to avoid in happening um, so yeah I, it's gonna be a lot of planning moving forward <laughs> well Tomba <clears throat> that was amazing. I mean, you really be. I think it's really important as well as the job to to really be honest with ourselves, to really we do. have a real look at ourselves and see where we need to find balance, as I call it, equilibrium. We yeah. really need to find that equilibrium, that real balance in our lives, because we're giving so much out with Joma, and sometimes we've really got to look after ourselves. We've really got to make sure that when we're giving, that we're giving ourselves as well, happiness and joy, especially with our friend, friends and our family. It's really important to not forget that. And sometimes we can give so much, can't we, Joma? We forget about our own lives. <laughs> we forget about, what about me? You know, what <clears> am I giving to myself? Am I giving myself everything that I need for me to be happy? And that's really important. So. I honestly believe that happiness is about giving. Of course I do. But we've got to give something back as well for our lives and for our families mm -hmm. as well because they're important for us. They made us the people who we are today and we cannot forget them because they're always, as I would say, supporting us behind the scenes. They always want to make sure that we are happy and make sure that we are joy, feeling joy in everything that we do, feeling happy in everything that we do. And if we're not, our families and the people close us may hold us accountable. So I always say that, Joma, that I always make sure that my family are looking out for me. If they feel that something isn't right or they feel that there's something concerned about me, they can address it with me, you know. They can tell me, Frankie, I'm just a bit worried about this, I'm a bit worried about that. It's like yeah. my sister, she was worried about my health at one stage. And now I'm really, really doing something about it to really look after myself. Because health is wealth. And if I, if I ain't got health, I've got nothing. So now I'm really focused on being, like you, Joma, a real best fitness person and coach so I can inspire other people as well to be really fit mentally, physically, and emotionally to be really, really fit. Would you agree with that, Joma? It is... I, 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 in my own experience, that um, I, I find I find the greatest joy, and I think it's true for a lot of people, especially for coaches, that um, we find I find a lot of great satisfaction in giving and supporting and equipping other people. Um, that, that's one of the ways that I find amazing experience and, and joy in my life. <clears throat> Having said this, though, I have to be mindful as well as you said earlier to make sure that it's a good balance between giving and receiving, giving, you know, giving and receiving. Uh, there has to be a good balance with that because uh, uh, in my experience that when, when I just continue to give and give and give and I don't take the time to receive help from other people, 
I don't search for uh, ways to take care of my health. I find that it compromises the quality and uh, and the quantity of, of my giving to other people. So it, it's always a, a fine, thin line of um, the giving and the receiving so that I can continue to do the things that I do, the things that I love in a, a in a very high quality service. I know that if I stop taking care of my health, it will definitely significantly negatively affect the quality and the quantity of giving and helping other people. <clears throat> and one of the things that key things for myself is I sleep. I, sleep is uh, a big challenge for me because I love to stay at night reading and learning. And, and sometimes I get so immersed in what I'm reading and learning that um, I compromise a good sleep. And when I wake up the next day, I'm just so, so overwhelmed. I was like, oh, I don't have the energy to do the things that I need to do. Um, simply because I neglected to get a good sleep the night before. So sometimes that that's a balance that I, I need to learn. Uh, yes, I, I want to learn, but at the same time, I need to be aware that uh, I need to get a little bit more rest and sleep so that um, it won't negatively affect in how I help and serve my clients. Anybody interested in that, John, what you said? Yes, um, I think sleep is really important. It's something that uh, I can struggle with as well, sleep. Um, I think I have a, a mental illness called tinnitus. The tinnitus is like a ringing in the ears or a hissing in the ears. And that experience that in one ear. So so that sometimes can affect the way I sleep. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes people use a lot of monitors where they've got like water, dripping water, or maybe dripping rain, mm -hmm. or just some other noises what they use to help themselves sleep because people suffer with tinnitus. I think there's one in seven people in the UK who has tinnitus. Or as they say, this symptom. So it's a very kind of popular um, illness, I would say, which exists in the UK. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of people can find it quite debilitating. A lot of people can really suffer with it, you know. And some I'm people, sorry, unfortunately, yeah. take their lives, you know. Mm. They feel that it's just too much for them. You know, they feel that they cannot switch off or they cannot sleep. Or it may be distracting them in a real you know, severe way. So unfortunately, yeah. people cannot cope with it. But me, I've had it for over 20 years now, nearly 20 years. Wow. And I've really developed the... Um, I've gotten used to it, but really developed how to manage it, Joe. And that's the way I'm looking for, how to manage this illness in my ears and how to manage it. And even though a lot of people feel it's in the ears, I think they said it may be something to do with the brain. So... um. You know, a lot of people tend to get it through either loud music, maybe loud noise or machinery working in loud places, which affects your ears. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's how they say a lot of people get it. So there's still a lot of research going into tinnitus because they still haven't found the cure for it. Right. And the feel as well, John, that, you know, there's a lot of people living with certain illnesses, what they've got to live with, or certain obstacles and maybe certain challenges, what they've got to live with. And I feel as well, John, you know, that... They make us a more grounded and better person living with these illnesses or these challenges, don't they, John? It gives us something to really focus on or gives us something to 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 make us or make our lives better and challenge this illness, challenge us to, to really try and conquer an illness if we can or cope with it in our lives the best we can, you know, to to prove to people that you can live among certain illnesses. You can be a great person or a human being or a great individual to so many people's lives. And you can sometimes just make that difference, the fact that you have an illness. You can live with it and you can be really productive, you know, to help other people, you know, and encourage other people that they can can live, live through anything or, you know, cope with anything. Mm -hmm. Obviously, illness is... It's something that can hinder our life. 
it can definitely hinders our joy. Uh, it can definitely minimize our impact in people's lives. That is absolutely true. Just as I shared last session, I think that we had last episodes that we had how um, how my mom had enlargement of the heart from the time that she was born. And I'm sure there are other people as well that have, you know, their own illnesses in lives, in their own lives, but they never allow the illnesses that they had or have stop them full, from fully maximizing and living their life to the fullest uh, with these illnesses that they have. It's a, a big part of it is it's a, it's a matter of choice yeah here's what i mean uh, like my mom i um she had an enlarger the heart she couldn't really do the thing that she loves to do or she wanted to do because of the complication that she had with her heart but she always made sure that whatever she was able to do that she will fully maximize those things um yeah, there were things that she wasn't able to do. So she didn't really focus on the thing that she wasn't able to do because there's nothing really she can do about those because of a condition that she was in. But what she focused on was the things that she knows that she was good at and really maximize her time and energy investing on those things that she was good at. And for that reason, she was able to do some great things even though she wrestled with, you know, with a heart condition the whole entire life. And, and I think that is something that I would encourage people who are probably watching right now or you know, um, or later on um, who's dealing with chronic illnesses. Uh, again, I'm, I'm not minimizing the, the pain and the difficulty of this thing. Having said that, sometimes it is also a matter of acknowledging what is my limitations and also choosing to maximize my life on the things that I can do as I, as I deal with the limitations due to the illnesses that I have. Um, it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, our friend Gregory, hopefully sometimes soon he's going to join in. I'm sure he's a coach. I'm sure he, he, he can relate to this. And uh, me playing a little bit of sports in high school, uh, when you're playing basketball, sometimes you you twist your ankle, you sprain your finger. Uh, you know, I could easily say, you know what, I sprained my finger, and so therefore I'm done. I'm not going to play anymore. Or I could I could go to my coach and say, okay, you know, uh, figure something out uh, to take my two fingers to, like this, so the sprained one will be protected, and I can continue playing the game. Uh, so that's a choice, a choice of, oh man, I sprained my thumb so therefore I'm out of the game forget about the whole the rest of the three more quarters of the game or I can find a way to protect my thumb and continue playing the game to the to the best of my ability even though I have a sprained thumb um, so th that would be an encouragement that, that I would present to people who are dealing with illnesses is yes, I'm dealing with this unfortunate illness and it affects me this way. But at the same time, I have to acknowledge also that there are things that are working for me. There are things that are healthy about my body, but healthy about my life. And uh, let me focus on those and, and see how I can maximize and fully utilize the things that are working. Uh, so my life will still have great meaning, great purpose and uh, to the best of my ability to be able to still experience the joy uh, in spite of me wrestling with this specific illness or disability. That would be my thought on that. No, no, I think it's great. I think it's a, I think it's a great thought. I mean, um, you talked to some really important aspects of what you talked about with illness, uh, how you, you cope with illness and why it's important that um you knowing my faith and my beliefs we say um you know what sickness can therefore be an obstacle you know and then um, 
you know, the human spirit, you know, is um, is incredible, isn't it, Joma? You know, the human spirit, you know, us as people, you know, what we call it, um, our pain barrier or the fresh or the pain barrier, what, what we have, you know, we have an incredible pain barrier to to cope and deal with pain and to go, to deal with difficulties and sufferings, you know. Mm -hmm. We always have these challenges, you know. So, um, you know, going through that pain barrier, I feel, yeah. is always quite important, Joma, you know, and that we all have to go through pain barrier to make us an even more better and a more determined person, you know, because we cannot avoid sufferings or pain. All it can do, Joma and James, is make us stronger and make us better people. Yeah. So remember that, yeah. So really, experiment, really um, understand what pain is and really get to grips with it, you know, live with it and understand it, what it is, you know, and then um, use it to make you a stronger and a better person. That's what it I would is. say, Joma and yeah. James. James, yeah. good to and, have you. Good to uh, uh, find, good, find, good. Uh, uh, an incredible, an incredible guy, a dear, dear friend of mine. James, thanks for coming on. I'm really glad to see you, man. I always got to see your face, your happy, smiling face. So much positivity, doing so much great work in the community. I'd like to introduce you to my dear friend, John DeLeon here. So this is a great James Gregory Joma. Hi, James. Nice, Joma. Pleasure to meet you. And it's an honor and pleasure to meet you also oh. as well, my friend. Thank you. We we appreciate you taking the time to be with us. And I'm sure you have a busy schedule. So you joining us, it, it is a pleasure and honor to meet you. And mm -hmm. our you know, our dear friend, Frank, he has been speaking highly about you. And uh, I look forward and really just to have a dialogue with you and um, how you're helping and supporting uh as a coach, right? As a coach, I'm sure there's a lot of great wisdom that you have learned uh, in, in your life and also in their lives that will be very beneficial to the young adults and youth yes. uh, of our of our present time. So having said that, welcome, and I look Thank forward you. to learning with you. Me as well. Thank you very much for the introduction. So James, it's all you on, man. It's all, it's all you, buddy. Okay. Well, um, thanks for the invitation. Um, my name is James Gregory. I um, come from Jamaican heritage. Um, my mum had six children and both my parents um, have passed over and deceased now. Mm. Um, I'm a twin also. Um, my mother was a nurse. My father was a lorry driver. And um, I went to the local school here in Manchester and um, secondary school, I kind of found sport, really. When I went to secondary school, I, I could run quickly. I could put a ball in a net. And for me, everything just clicked, you know? But going through the 90s, we experienced and seen a lot of violence in our communities. Mm. Um, I think the 90s changed everything um, growing up as a, a young man. I seen friends who we went to school with murdered. Hmm. We seen the drugs which came into our communities, change our communities. We seen the breakdowns of families. And we had gangs which grown, went to nursery, went to secondary, went to college, and then they end up imploding on each other. And these effects are still here with us today. Mm. And um, learning from that, um, May the 11th, 2009, really changed my view of the world. I received a phone call which changed my life. Um, my twin phoned me and told me to go to the North General Hospital, Giuseppe. Giuseppe was my son. I got to the hospital. I seen the police officers outside the hospital. I seen a car, a gray car, which had its windows blown out at the back of the vehicle. I reached to the entrance. The officer asked me, what's my name? My body at the time and mind was starting to shut off. It's like I was going into shock. 
I told him my name. I went into the theater and I seen my son lying down with a fresh bullet wound to his head. Mm. And, you know, I fell onto my knees and the loudest scream I ever felt could come out of me at that moment in time came out. Mm. I managed to go outside for some air. All I could hear is murmurs, you know, his grandmother was there, his mum was there. Um, Giuseppe was the only child of his mother. So that night, Giuseppe and his friends went to an event and the passenger person ran out of the vehicle, went into the, the venue and, and came back to the vehicle saying, Oh, there's no, it, it seemed like that night wasn't getting busy yet. We'll come back later. So as they've jumped back into their vehicle, driving out, three young men have come out of the, the bushes, what was there, ages 16, 17, and 18. And the youngest person started follow, following the shots, live round ammunition out into the vehicle of the car. And even from going to the Crown Court case, they were um, they shown that even one of the, the bullets entered somebody's window across the street. So if the member of the public was have been there at that time, there would have been another life lost. So as these young men le le leveled the shots at the vehicle, ran off into the night, his friend, the friend says, are you okay, Giuseppe? And realized Giuseppe has not said a word. And it was that panic what drove them straight to the general hospital. Um, and within, God was so good on that day, the three occupants who ran across into a car what was waiting, for some reason there was a, a man at, well, I don't know if it's a man or a woman, was at their window and they seen three young boys jump into a vehicle and for some reason, they took the registration down. Not knowing anything, they just thought it was very odd that these young people have just run in and jumped in the vehicle and, and gone. So within like an hour of that, that, that incident, there was a registration of some sort. I, they, they, they had a vehicle that they could track. Mm -hmm. And from that onwards, a picture was emerging of these young boys. When I, when I previously told you about the gangs, which was from the nineties here in Manchester, especially Moss Side, because it's a place which I, I, I've, I, I've grown and, 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 and been, been to school from. That same gang of the Gooch and Donington, they were the same names of these young people wanting to idolize. So we could see that, 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 that those, those traumas are carried forth into the next generation already. Hmm. And, you know, because we've come from the streets and we know the community, I was very clued up as to meeting the ones who are part of the streets and, and say, who is X, Y, Z? And they said to me, James, we know none of them. It's young people hearing stories and don't know anything else. So we the blind are leading the blind, basically, down this alley. And this young man who took my son's life, who's age 16, um, he lived in a nice affluent area of where he lived, but he kept coming over to Moss Side, where that where where some of those stories of 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 of, of roadman, as they like to call themselves, um, think that they can operate in 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 a in a kind of county lines way, if you know what county lines are, where they're using young people as mules to carry drugs. So for me, um, me as a father, experience as a parent, experience the loss of a child who happened to be born on my 21st birthday, mm. um, caught, left a deep unanswered quavering questions around society, around fatherhood, around violence in general, in all its forms. So um, 
from going through the trial, I noticed, and when I asked for support from victim support at the time, this was the second week into my son's death, they told me that there's no funding or support for me as a black father. No funding support. I didn't know where to go, where to look, all they just told me there's no funding. Yeah. Now, there was a mother whose son was murdered in 1999, and she set up an organization called Mothers Against Violence. And I, I already had a, a relationship with, with this mother, but when I lost my son, it felt like I came in this exclusive club. And I went to see her and I says to her, because I went through, when I tried to ask as a father, where's the support? And the, and the system told me there isn't none. I says, could I start an organization called Fathers Against Violence? And for some reason she says, that sounds great with all my blessings. So mothers and fathers came together on 20, in 2011. And that kind of, Patsy kind of took me under her arms and gave me a space to develop the organization. I didn't know how to set up an organization. The only thing I knew is that I needed to respond to the death of my child and to vindicate that beautiful soul which came to this earth and blessed us who knew him. And um, Patsy gave me this journey and this is where Frankie, and I really met because I started a father support group. And from supporting this group enabled us to start looking into education, into, you know, liberating ourselves, looking at African studies, looking at employment. And just as adults, just having a space, I didn't know what it was about. I just needed someone to listen, just whatever that was we was you know you had um this session when people were crying you know it was just an open space where we would meet every tuesday for two hours and just speak look at the news we'll take out cuttings of news cuttings and we'll speak about the topics of of the news and how the media portrays you know the black man and his family and just trying to dig down some of those 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 questions that we we kind of don't speak about no more, about our identity, about our history and about knowledge of self, Empower, empowerment really. And that's how um, we was, we kind of come together on, a, on, a, on, on building, how could fathers be positive role models for some of these young people? Because for me going through the trial and seeing these young boys laughing in Crown Court they were up for murder. And I was thinking how a state of mind of our next generation, they're in this situation and they're finding it funny that you've taken a life and not realized what you've actually just done here. It made me, and I mean, at that time when the trial finished with my reflections, I had to find forgiveness within myself to free myself. I had to understand what forgiveness, it wasn't about them, it was about me. I did not want to journey on living in hatred and feeling damaged because I'm these young pain. individuals, pardon? I'm living in pain, James, you're right there, yeah. A kind of yeah, release from that so you can move on into it, James, yeah, which is challenging very strong person and strong will to do that and very challenging but yeah James I agree with you 100 percent I think you know because I had faith before I even come to this point I feel like the universe already gave me that opportunity to develop that sacred ground within myself so I could move through because the challenges were ahead of me I just need to know that I was preparing myself through the acts of faith that I already had within myself. I felt like I could release what I've been, what, what, what I put into myself. I was able to use those, 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 um, what, like affirmation, positive affirmations for things that can build my character 
from the trauma and the devastation that these young people have brought into society. And also, it's not the case of just, um, um, these, young these young men had live weapons in their hands and listening to where the gun originally came from. So that gun was made in China. Then it came to London in a shooting, came to another shooting in Birmingham, and then came to Manchester. So can you see already that the destruction already was before it even came to us? If you see through the process of making weapons, because weapons are only for destruction. And as a society, which, which, which the streets can get hold of these things, maybe, um, 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 not as what is, was before, but you know, knowing the right people, these things can still be found. And to see that, the, as I says, this this mindset of you know, I kind of can call it a bit of a fifty cent kind of thing, um, trying to get rich quickly, trying to die too quickly. You know, the music that these young people are learning to, the drill that the the, the, the music is very negative. It's always playing one against the other. It's always being destructive against the other. So the so and then we go into the, the the exclusion rate of seeing our young boys excluded from mainstream schools, and then going into pupil referral units. These have a knock-on effect. Well, it's, it's like proof to pipeline. It's getting them ready for the criminal justice system. So we're losing a lot of these great minds to a system that already is against them anyway, and they're not even aware of the challenges and the trauma and everything else, the loneliness and, and just everything else what's going to affect their future. So for me, it was a case of listening, learning, developing this charity, which has been going for 14 years now. So from Fathers Against Violence, I set up um, in 2016, Families Against Violence. I think Fathers Against Violence kind of gave me the voice as a father while I was in the wilderness, I needed to, to, to say and get things off my chest. And as I was over, so, so from 2011 to 2016, that's when Families Against Violence was registered as a charity, because I think it, it is about the families. And it's something that I'm against and I'm against violence. It kind of just, it kind of, it kind of just came into that natural flow from fathers to families. And now um, sport was a great introduction into the outreach into my community when I launched my football program, Can You Kick It? Can You Kick It started as an outreach program. Um, I went to university college they were out of the father's group. There was a young teacher there called Peter. And through that, through, through being at the father's group, Peter presented me an opportunity to go to university. What came up as a practitioner um, working in, in gangs and community safety. I thought, wouldn't that be a great addition to be able to go through this experience as, as, as well as having kind of an academic side that I could present some of the findings around youth violence and also give the impact of a parent who's lost a child. I thought that reach would be, um, I thought that reach would have a bigger far reach than um, I could imagine. And um, from that, I came a mentor, a football coach. I'm a chairman of my own football club now. Um, our, our, our huge is, I've been building communities um, for the last few years now. Um, I've got some great partnerships that I work from with City, being one Manchester City Football Club, um, which is, um, you know, a, a smile for Frankie's face there. Um, <laughs> um, I work with the City Council, uh, Manchester City Council. I work with um, um, Somali women. Um, I work with African Muslim um, men as well and boys. Um, I, I reach out to, I re work in schools. Um, my work is really, um, has a message behind what I do. And um, we're trying to disrupt, you know, and, and provide early 
intervention and prevention for our young people using sport. Um, and yeah, but it's just been enabled, enabled me to, to publicly speak at events where I'm asked to, 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 to share my journey. And it's just given me that extra, that extra drive to, to, to feel like my calling may have come by losing a child, but from losing a child, I've been able to save a child as well. And I think sometimes, you know, you have to look at the balance of it all. Was My son came with a cause and, and I was the effects of the father and the son in the union of my spiritual mind of, of how I see myself and the connection I have um, with my son, because it was a traumatic experience. And even when I um, go through the anniversaries and go to see the extended family, you know, his grandma didn't have that honor of having a grandchild or neither his mother seeing, you know, our son grow up to be the man he was meant to be. Um, he was into photography, um, you know, he's into his music. Um, and, you know, we didn't get to, to enjoy that with him. Um, but I, I, I looked at him and I promised him that I would sacrifice my life the way his life was sacrificed for others. And I laid down my life for my community. And I've been working tirelessly um, for the last 14 years to prevent another life being lost. Um, this morning, I've, I've been at the junior session. I've just finished our um, six to 11 session. And then we have the 12 to 16 year old session. Um, on a, um, also, we have the girls session six to eight. And also at eight to 10, we have the 18 upwards as well. On a, and this is all on a Saturday. I make sure that I'm there for my community. Um, I fight for my community. I want resources for my community. And just, I, I love the passion that I, that I got for my, for my people and for the things that I've been in charge as a community leader to, to be able to provide um, a safe space where young people can come, develop, learn. Um, and if you want the qualifications through, 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 through our networks, um, to, to study about trauma as well, to understand, to prevent other things happening in the community, we're able to give them that education um, and liberation for themselves. So we're trying to create fathers of tomorrow. They are the fathers of tomorrow, the leaders of tomorrow which we duly need, um, you know, they say they're hard to reach, but I don't know anybody who's hard to reach. Young people just need somebody to listen to them. And that's something that I've become um, commonplace to do. Um, those who they write off, send them to me, you know? Um, I like those rough diamonds, they just need smoothing out, you know? Um, mm. But yeah, it's been a beautiful journey. Um, I never felt like a victim. You know, I've always felt victorious. It's just, you know, getting through the different challenges that we all face, um, whether it's just, you know, your mental health, you know, your well-being, you know, your financial future, you know, you know, just you, you want to see your loved ones do well, you know, just the normal things that everybody goes through. I'm no different. It's just that losing my son changed my life and I, I, I found the courage to, to stand up and speak um, to, yeah, I found the courage to speak. And I think that's where I can share that with you guys. So really, thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you so much, James. You know, um, you know I, felt, I felt, I really felt your heart there, my good friend. And I really felt um, that pain. And I remember that time when we was at, um, in Mossai when we first kicked off the Powers Against Violence, mm -hmm. um, working a charity and, you know, um, seeing you there, you know, um, you know, at that meeting and all the amazing people we had on board with the BBC, the police and all the important people was there and the pain you was going through and I really felt that pain, you know, and um, I really, I really felt that um, I was so glad to, to meet somebody like you felt like I need to meet somebody like you to really transform and change my life because my life was a little bit, you know, 
dark and gloom and felt a little bit, you know, down myself. So you really picked it up. And what you did, you know, I've been really inspired about what you've been doing. And, um, you know, I've been always coming to your meetings and supporting you where I can. And I know that you're a very busy guy full of substance, you know. And then for me in 2014, you know, uh, and James shared some of them experiences of what he's been through with losing a child. I mean, I lost a stepson as well in 2014, and it gave made me a deeper connection to really James and what he went through and that kind of pain of losing somebody who, who you love, you know, mm-hmm. somebody's in your family, in your life. Mm-hmm. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, and, and the trauma and the pain it can have and the effects it can have on your family as well. And mm-hmm. James put that all into perspective. But I honestly believe that with James and myself here in Joma, and, and the audience sat, you know, no matter who who's moved on or dead or been passed away, they're still with us. They're mm-hmm. still there. Oh, and they're yeah. still watching over us mm-hmm. and watching all this great work that we do. Do you feel that, James, like a real still connection to your son, to our sons, that they're watching and seeing what we're going to do, you know, uh, and how we're uh, going to is- change the world and change society. So for me, that bond was really strong. Yes. Do you feel yes. that, James, yeah? And it was important that you said about being a victim or being victorious. Mm-hmm, I mean, mm-hmm. it's painful when you lose somebody you lose, especially mm-hmm. when they've been murdered, mm-hmm, which mm-hmm. we've experienced, me and James, mm-hmm. you know, it's horrible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So James, to say that, you know, was really great, you know, to mm-hmm. remember that, that our kids, our sons, are leaving us something behind for us to say, right, let's make a difference in society. Mm-hmm. Let's mm-hmm. carry the baton for our children now and really make a difference. And James, what James thinks about in his life, I feel about that in my life, about this, the kind of negative wrongs that are in our society, mm. even in communities, but especially in our black community as well, the negativity and mm. the wrongs that are in our society, our music, this kind mm-hmm. of, um, you know, putting violence on a pedestal like mm. violence is norm like mm, violence yeah. is okay yes. it's not no I mean, it's not James that we do a lot of work to overcome and challenge violence mm-hmm. that's right you that's know? right and it's really important isn't it, james that we make that difference for our next generation, next generation. the 21st gen- generation yeah the 21st century of yes. children you know yeah, yes and early in- early prevention makes that um the earlier we can build and, and support young people, the better. Because some of the young people, when you're trying interventions, when they're 15, it's late. It's a late. They're, they're, they're ready to run from the nest, you know, if they don't have the family structure around them. Mm. You know, and this is what we look, we're noticing, the breakdown of families. We're noticing men being absent from these young boys. Who, and who are not showing them any rites of passage. I see more women um, are, with dropping off their, their boys than I do of males engaging with their boys, if that makes sense. Yeah. You That's know, what so, the problem is, isn't it, James? It, yeah. Absolutely. You know, we're not seeing men in the, in the communities stepping up. It's like everybody's in the window looking at, at, oh, that looks this, that that looks nice, but not actually actioning themselves to do anything. It, there's no use talking about, talk is talking, but if you're not mm. gonna act. You've got to walk. You've got to walk, haven't you, James? You know, <laughs> you've got to walk, you know? <laughs> you're, gonna, yeah. you're gonna have to move your feet, in, no matter how the tide looks. You've gotta got to get going. We've got mm. to get going. I've kept moving, even through COVID, I was still moving because we was hearing stories of young people's mental health issues. So we was um, meeting young people in the park just to give them that extra physical um, and and mental stimulation through sport. We were still getting them jogging. We were still playing sport. We had to respond to something. Yeah. You know, what are you gonna do? Just let people just lie down. We are encouraging you, get up, get moving. We need you. When we need the team, you have to round up your troops, don't you? Exactly. You know, you know, know. we talk about we talk about great leaders. You know, Martin Luther King was a great leader once, and he says, "If you cannot walk, if you cannot crawl. run, yeah. walk. Yes. If you cannot walk, crawl. 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 Do anything, but just keep moving, moving. forward. 
forward, you know. Absolutely. And that's right, James. In in it, Joma. That's that's what we have to do. Yeah, yeah. You know. Come on, then so we back to things. Things. Yes. Go on. So thank you for really being passionate about what you talked about there. I thought it was great, James. I knew it was going to be passionate anyway, and it's going to be really meaningful. I'd like to ask you some questions, James. Is that okay? A couple yes, of questions. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Is that okay, Go James? Yeah. Because I know you're a great guy. I know you're doing so much, and you're, the, you're a pioneer. You're a pioneer. You know. And um, James, what I want to ask you because, you know, you're a football coach, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what lessons have you learned about being a football coach? What What has it done for you? At, at, you know, at, in your life as being a football coach, what lessons? crucial points and disciplines have you learned from being a football coach? I think um, building a team, building individuals to work together to, for a goal. So because we, we live in a diverse community, we'll, have, we'll be working with the Libyan boys, we'll be working with the African boys, with some of the Caribbean boys, some of the Pakistani boys, some of the, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a collective of, of different um, beings, energy. And we're gonna, um, um, and we want to win that trophy. We want to lift that trophy. How are we going to do that? How are we gonna train? Are we gonna prepare? Are you going to be on time? Are you going to get to the gym? Are you working when, when no one else is not seeing you work? You know, those, 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 you know, I only can provide the foundation, but it's up to you to add in the tools that you need. It's, you know, you can't turn up to the session and you've got, say, high heels on. You know, it's, it's not going to work, is it? You know, you need your football boots. You know, you need your bottle of drink. You know, you need you know, your shorts, you know, you need to turn up as, 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 as you mean to, to, to add your value to what you want to achieve. You know, I always ask young people, what is it that you want to get out of this? Well, I want to win something. Well, then if we want to win something, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to have to train. We're going to have to, to understand each other's positions. You know, there's a, there's a philosophy behind winning something. Now, when I first won something, it was back in 2015, um, with a special bunch of, of young people. And what I liked about that was um, they just wanted to play. And when you've got a bunch of young people who just want to play and have got respect for each other, nothing, there should be no issues around achieving that goal. And that was when we, had, when we won our first trophy. Um, in 2015 at the Power League and to see what we achieved then we didn't lose it's like we lost no games really we was just battering teams like 9-0 you know 8-0 you know just ridiculous amount of scores and you know these young men went on to play like in Burnley Bolton you know to, to see what we started as an outreach project getting young people off the streets and then seeing them get into academies and into proper footballing um, institutions. For me, I, 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 I always say you start here, but end up over there. It's like, I'm just clapping for you. So mm. can you kick it has, has really enabled different parts of our society to come together. It's, I've given a young person who's, who's got his UEFA B license. He's the 22 and he's one of the youngest managers in the league. I've given responsibility to manage my football club. And this young man was with me since he was about 11 years old and he's now 22 who manages my football club. And for me, um, to see that generational and he's going to be a father of tomorrow. They're the leaders of tomorrow that we create. That's the value that I want to leave behind Um more, more of those young men. It takes a generation to, to, to see the value. You know, that's what it's took me to, about every 10 years you should see changes come through because they'll go from boys to men. And if we have them for that kind of period of time, then that, that gives us enough time to shine. That gives us that, that individual opportunities to lead, to develop and build his confidence 
he or she, he or she as well, because we do have a female participation program as well, which is female led as well. So we do have our cookie leaders of tomorrow, our female leaders of tomorrow coming through. I think it's it's, it's of a balance. I know that um, I targeted the boys because boys seem to be more of a, an issue where they, they seem to have um, less chances um, through the system to, to be themselves. Um, girls seem to navigate and be able to, to move a little bit more openly than, than, than the boys. So yeah, for me, Frankie, it's always just giving these young people a goal, asking them to how they're going to contribute to it as well. And then, you know, with, with the right settings, the right... Um, the right conditions and yeah it all just comes together it's like magic you know we get we get def great defenders we get great attackers we get you know people who who just can play the game and because there's a lot of talent in Manchester I'm, I'm pretty spoiled as well and Manchester City as well are one of my sponsors as well for my kit so you know it just it just feels like when people come that, and, and I even play at Main Road, which is where Manchester City started out. That's where right. my right. Where, where, I'm, where I'm based. Um, so I've kind of got a bit of a history to the home of football as well. That 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 kind of makes people feel, wow, this is this is something special. So um, yeah, it's just using sport, getting these boys around the around the goal. And again, seasons ahead, we're we're ready to do the same again. You know, um, we're working hard. Um, we added new um, youngsters from the squad. So those who are like 16, 17, we're starting to get them to train with the 18, 19, 20 now. But it's an open league that that we're in. Um, it's the Manchester Amateur um, Sunday League. And um, yeah, just looking forward to the next season ahead, Frankie. Fantastic, James. I mean, I love what you said. I mean, for you, James, what you've highlighted as well, which I think is really important because we know with us being so positive, all three of us, we're very positive people. And we always see the points of what exists in society, where society either wants to divide us mm -hmm. and rule us. Yeah. Mm. So mm -hmm. you've seen James here bringing all different communities together, which is really important from all different nationalities. And I think that's really important to bring people together. And you know, you know yourself, James and Joma, you know, you can lead a horse to water. It doesn't mean to say it's going to drink it. Mm, so yeah. you give them the choice. But well, what are you going to do with this choice? James, you give them a choice. Do you want to become a professional footballer? Or do you want to do something of positivity in your career? I'll give you the choices here and I'll give you the options. Are you going to run with it? So we see, well, as James says, where the diamonds are and where they need polishing and the ones who want to be this really polished diamond and this real gem shining, you know, in society, mm -hmm. making a difference. Mm -hmm. And it's really important, and I feel that's what's important, James and Joma, that we're always giving, and it's really important for the audience to remember, that we're always giving our young child, children or adults, our young adults, the options, the choices mm -hmm. to be a great footballer, or like James says, a great manager or a great coach. Well, we're giving them the options all the time. You know, even just a great human deal. being. You've got the space. Great human yeah. being, Frankie. Just being a great yeah. human being, yeah. you know, who has morals and values. Mm. You know, just the basics, you know, what, what you're reminding people of who they are. And sometimes people are not reminded of who they are and what gift that you're here to unwrap and give. Exactly. You know, I found my gift from losing the child that I've been able to, to unpack that and give it away. You know, everything that I do is all forgiving. You know, that I'm not here for taking, I'm all forgiving, you know? And, exactly. I, and, when, and when I found that, then I'm here for living too then. <laughs> uh, James, I, I just want to say, I don't know where to begin. Um, I'm very quiet because uh, I want to just listen to your story. And uh, first and foremost, um, my heart goes out to you uh, for losing your child. I, I don't even know where to begin, how to feel that. Um, but at the same time, 
I'm very excited about all the great things that you're doing. Um, I, I, the reason I was looking on down is because I'm, I'm typing notes, the things that you're saying and all the great things that you, that you, that went, that came out from such a tragedy. Um, I think you said you created Father Against Violence. Um, from there, uh, another program started, which is, um, what, what is it? Can you kick it? Uh, it's like a sport program. Um, mm -hmm. I also, you said something that also, that, that I love, that me myself have to learn, which is, you said, I'm there for my community, I fight for my community. That is such a very powerful, powerful message. Uh, sometimes there's a tendency that I'm speaking about myself. Sometimes yes. it's the tendency that I so focus about myself mm -hmm. that I overlook mm -hmm. what's going on in my community. Mm -hmm. And if I'm a little bit more attentive in what, and that this is exactly what I've learned from you right now. Okay. Is that if I can be a little bit more attentive in my community and see what it is that I can do based on my skills and my talents and my abilities. Mm -hmm. um, it opens that window. It, 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 it opens windows and it, it allows me to give back. That's correct. Give back. Um, That's correct. So, your story, your message deeply resonates to me, and I'm sure to a lot of parents as well. Uh, and you said another, I think, that a key, a key thing that's happening, um, which is the missing of fatherhood mm -hmm. in our society. Mm -hmm. uh, my story is um, I have a son who lives in Canada. I haven't seen him since he was less than a year old and he's 24 now. Wow. Uh, my, my lesson is uh, it, it was my wrongdoing. I was involved in a wrong group at a, a young age. Mm -hmm. and breaking into it, I was arrested for breaking and turning into a car. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, for that reason, uh, it's a felony in Canada. So I can't cross border to Canada oh, okay. with that record. Wow. And for that reason, uh, I haven't seen my son since he was less than a year old. But mm -hmm. what I managed to do is, is that um, I kept in touch with him all through these years. Right. Now, I have a good, strong bonding with him. Uh, we talk almost every other day for an hour, um, mm -hmm. even though I'm not there physically, but I made, mm -hmm. I made sure and continue to make sure that he knows that he has a father who loves him, who is there for mm -hmm. him mm -hmm. uh, all through his life. Yes, and uh, we're planning for him to come and visit me this coming year, which is a so so excited. Yeah, yeah, um, I can feel that. <laughs> so excited, so excited. Uh, and so, even though I'm not there physically, I, I try to do my best to let him know that you have a father, though he might not be there with you. You have a father who loves you, care for you, who's there for you. Mm. A father who is there to listen if you yes. need ears. Yeah. A father yeah. who is a, has a shoulder there for you if you need to cry. Mm -hmm. A father who is there, who loves you beyond unconditional. Life, uh, unconditional. Mm. Um, so mm. I, I made sure that all through these years, this message of I'm there for you is clearly communicated all through the years up to now. Uh, as a matter yeah. of fact, I just had a great conversation with him yesterday just about life struggles and how to move forward and how to make your life meaningful, even though you have a rough start in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, absolutely. And, and um, so your message not only uh, encourages me, it also challenges me oh, to step that's... up, to step up in, in, a, in, a, in, in a greater level in becoming uh, as a father. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm grateful. And uh, I praise God that um, through the tragedy that you went through, you were able to find, as you said, uh, the life and the gift to give back. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, through, and through that, uh, I think you also said that, um, what did you say? Some, 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 uh, I might misquote you, but I think the whole just of what you said is from losing a child, 
I'm able to save a child. Yes. And, and I think that is such a very, very powerful, powerful message. Powerful and message. and uh, I thank you for being with us. And I really hope that this is just the beginning of our relationship uh, as a fellow human being, as a fellow father who have a big desire to see the future you to grow and make a positive difference in their community. So I humbly thank you for being with us, James. Um, and um, really, you know, Frankie reached out and, and, and says, you know what, when I finish, I'll come straight over and I'm really humbled and, and delighted to share with you guys today. And as it says, if the message to others, you know, in, in this beautiful space of, of, of what we've been given, we, we are custodians of this planet, we have, you know, to, to, to bless each other, to encourage each other and be that brotherhood and that sisterhood for each other that, you know, we feel globally, we, we're interconnected. Everything is interconnected. You know, yes. we must think that from that interconnectedness that we are together rather than this division of what those who would like that to happen, but we, even in this triangle, even in this trinity, we are proof of that connectedness. So thank you again, and thank you so much, Frankie, for a lovely conversation. Thank you, thank you. And, thank and you, James, John, just... for what you've said, and James, thank you for everything what you've said. I'm just going to finish on one or two questions and we can close at the meeting. Mm -hmm. James, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. John was just touching about struggles. Mm -hmm. We all know the beauty of struggle. It mm -hmm. makes us who we are. Yeah. Yes. So what struggles have you been through then, James, the football coach? Let me and Joe know. Let me honest know. What are your struggles? Because I'm sat here and I'm thinking, James, man, this guy doesn't struggle. <laughs> the guy's a legend, you know. He doesn't struggle. We want to know your struggles, James, don't we, Joe? What is it you struggle with, brother? What do you struggle with as a coach? What are your challenges? What am I so... Um... I think, you know, also, so I got this, this dyslexia, yeah? It's one of my challenges that, you know, sometimes I, I, I try to, um, you know, so when I do writing or when I try to, to do things, it feels like I can't spell or, you know, the things that I want to do, I, I kind of wrestle with. But, you know, um, I can still manage to function and do the things that I want because you can still use the technology um, to, 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 to help you to do things. But, you know, I, I struggle, um, I, I, I sometimes struggle with um, trying to, trying to um, connect what I do to, 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 to be better. You know, I, 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 I strive to, 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 to leave a legacy where, we won't need to fight no more for, for, mm. for, for, for anything. Mm. You, you can be who you need to be without fitting into anybody's jar. Like to that. anybody, you know, to be free. I mean free within yourself without it being from a judgmental point of view and to take ownership of your spiritual heritage which we have, and to align yourself with it, which we have. You know, for me, as a, um, as I study, Af I study African history, world history, and for me, I need to align myself with who I think I am, and look into that rich tapestry of history, which has not been really brought through. To, from a schooling level to, 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 to even to certain parts of even university won't allow African studies to be part of their curriculum. And mm. it's up to and it's up to us to, to look back into ancient Kemet. And when I look at referring to history, I'm talking about history which started from the Nile Valley in Ethiopia, where civilization was born. Modern day, what you would call al land is the original name of Africa. The mother of and mankind. History is for every, the whole world is African, isn't it, James? It's everyone's history, it's our history. 
to it's embrace our history. and to celebrate. But it's, what's been, but it's what's been hidden from our history. Yeah. Mm. That's what I'm after. You know, the hidden yeah. parts. <laughs> yeah. You know, the lies what I've been told. You know, yeah. it's important to, 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 to hear the truth. You know, and shouldn't make colour blind us. Mm -hmm. mm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's 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 really to 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 rip down all of those walls that that and perceptions and and get out of prison. That's your mind. You need to empty your mind and get out of this prison so we can mm -hmm. really feel the love of sisterhood and brotherhood. James. You couldn't have put it any better. My one last question I'm going to ask you now, yeah? Your mission statement and your voice for young kids. Your mission statement, we all, well, I, hope, I know you've got a mission statement. What is it, yeah? And what are you going to share for the young adults as well, for them to be the positive role models and leaders in society? I think um, my mission, the mission that I, that we are on, um, is to disrupt violence wherever we see it. You know, because as I said, violence comes in poverty. You know, comes in, in not being able to eat. You know, not being able to have money. Exactly. You know, it comes in all its forms. So for me, it's trying to um, eradicate violence. And um, for empowerment, I feel at the moment, I, I'm going to be launching this thing called the family intervention model, mm. where families and the streets are going to be able to meet and then have some modules where parents can train up into, um, so if you wanted to go for an, an adventure, you know, we, we can send you to a learning out, learning place where you can go outdoors and learn. If you wanted a therapist, um, we will give you a therapist. You know, it's, it's, it's me looking at how can I respond to this holistic approach that mm. the families and the youth of the streets meet together. Because I see these families like asking me, James, what can we do? What can we do? And I'm thinking, well, okay, then I've been looking at the family structure. How can we train up families to meet in the middle with the streets. And that's the that's the next stage of the next two to three years. That's where I'm heading. Right. Uh, Frankie, be, be, before you close down, I just want to make sure that, um, James, uh, these, these are the comments of people who've been tuning in uh, as they listen to your story and your message. Uh, here's one that says, wow, James, you are a treasure and inspiration to your community and many more. James, thank you for all you do. Another one says, uh, James, you are inspirational. Um, thank you so much for being such a great asset. The last one I want to read says, such a powerful episode, gentlemen. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. Keep sharing your voices and speaking up your truth. You are a trailblazer and inspirational. So I just want to let you know, these are the comments as they listen to your story, James. Oh, uh, Thank you so thank much. You so much, so much for sharing Thank you so much. Thanks, Frankie. James, always a pleasure, man. Always happy to see you. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom, your knowledge, and everything that you do. I'll be catching up with you very shortly. I'm glad that I've exposed you to our global speakers community. I'm glad that you've met Joma, my dear friend, and I'm sure we'll all be doing something great. We'll be doing it now, but we're going yeah. to be more close working together to really make sure our youth stand up and be the leaders of the 21st century and change this world into a better, more caring and responsible world. So, James, I love you, man. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for being here. James is all over Facebook. He's got some Facebook um, pages. Can you kick it? Fathers Against Violence, Mothers Against Violence is on Facebook. James is a great guy. Thank you so much, audience, for being here. Joma, thank you so much for being here and listening to what James and, my, and the questions we've asked and what we've had to say. And thank you so much, everyone. You know who you are. You've been working behind the scenes to make this workshop happen today. So I really hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you guys for all your feedback and your interaction with us and your, and your great information for James. It was really great and you've made it what it is today. 
Joe, thank, thank you. you so much, James. I love you, man. Take care. Thank you. And I'll be catching you. up with you very, very soon. Yeah. Thank you. Have a nice evening, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you, guys. Take okay. care now. Nice bye, bye, now, James. Bye, bye, dear friend. Bye, bye, bye guys. Thank you. Bye. Cheers. Thank, thank you. you. Bye, bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, bye. Oh, beautiful. Thanks a lot, James, man, for being here, man. That was great. I just stopped it on Facebook anyway, because that's the main thing, yeah, and we'll just stop the recording, but thanks.